I mean, uh, welcome to the show. And, uh, that's about it. Are you still here? You know, I love it how America has turned into like a lawless place for everybody except for me. I got this guy. I'm going to pick up my son from school the other day. I got this guy driving a dirt bike at about 110 miles an hour. Spanish guy, no helmet. Just like blowing stop signs, doing wheelies. And I'm sitting there getting tickets in the mail from the fucking Port Authority for, I don't know, I, I'm not paying a toll. I love it. The toll is literally $2.50, but there's a $75 service charge. And this guy's over here pulling wheelies. I'm telling you right now, I'm about to take a stick and stick it right in his fucking front spokes. I mean, that's old school shit right there. When we used to ride bikes as kids, that's what we would do. We Kids are kind of like scumbags, I'm starting to realize. That's what we would do. If like a kid came down the block that you didn't really like, you took a stick and you rammed it in his front spokes as he rose by, and he just like, he went head, right, right over the fucking handlebars. It's like, it was like attempted homicide, to be honest with you. You think about, we didn't wear helmets back in the day, and a kid would literally like land on his face. I don't know. We had this one kid we didn't like coming around. We filled a bottle full of piss, like an old beer bottle full of piss, and then just like shook it at him as he went by. I never did any of these things. I was like a good kid. I'm telling you what, being a good kid doesn't pay off. I, I hate to tell you, you know, I got a son. I don't even know how to tell him. My son, come, walk, we were walking out of the grocery store the other day. And he says to me, hand to God. He says, Dada, some woman was buying toilet paper. He goes, how come when you buy toilet paper, they give you a receipt? He's like, are you going to return it after you wipe your ass? I was like, whoa, whoa, watch your language. Number one. What do you think this is? I didn't really, I, I chuckled inside. But I mean, these kids, he started, they're getting licensed. Let's listen, listen. You can't be cursing like that. I, you know what? I really don't give a fuck if my son curses, to be honest with you. I'm just in this, like, polluted soup of society where you got to pretend, like, certain words are bad. <sighs> Can I have coffee, please? Like, fucking, fucking honestly. So this guy's whipping back and forth on a motorcycle. Listen, I like to have a good time, just like the next guy. All right, you know, I get in my Mustang, I drive it around like an asshole. But around the neighborhood, I try to chill out, you know, maybe just a couple burnouts by the stop signs. Um, um. like lava this morning it's getting cold out I'm turning on the cup warmer this is like one of my prized possessions this coffee cup warmer Certain things in life, like certain things in life matter. I'm going to make a list one day and you're going to be amazed how short the list is. 
so you can eliminate all the fucking bullshit in your life. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I wanna live somewhere. I wanna move into a home. Like like a log cabin, to be honest with you. I don't know. I'd love to be roommates with the Unabomber. Probably be like the greatest roommate of all time. You'd be like, hey, what, what are you working on over there? It looks like uh, you got some computer parts. What's going on? I had this guy at work. He popped his trunk once. I swear to God, it, when he opened his trunk, it looked like all bomb making material. And I just pretended like I didn't see anything. I mean, what do you say? You know? And listen, you don't have to worry about the guy hogging the shampoo. Did you see that fucking guy? The Unabomber at the end? I don't know. Let him write his manifesto. I'll be in I'll be in the corner masturbating. Alright? That's all. We're paying rent this month? No, of course not. We live in a law cabin. What a wonderful thing. <sighs> Guys, there's not much going on here today. I hate to tell you. What do you want to talk about? You want to talk about these 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 astronauts trapped in space? This is what the news is rattling on about. I go, I go in the break room. There's two astronauts trapped in space. They're not going to be able to come to Earth for back to Earth for another year. I said, what are these? Are the two luckiest individuals alive? It's a man and a woman. You're telling me they're not fucking? Listen, I got news for you right now. NASA ground control calls. They say, uh, listen, guys, I got a little problem. Uh, the, 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 the ship that we sent you in is up in is a complete piece of shit from hell. Yeah, it's made by Boeing. Well, why is this company allowed to exist anymore? They're building airplanes for, 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 for people. And we can see there's obvious flaws in the company. The employees themselves will say on recordings that they would never fly on the planes that they build. They're taking 30 minute, 15 breaks over there. 15 minute breaks. I don't know, man. As soon as I get the announcement that I'm going to be stuck in space for a year, it's a guy and a woman. We're going to start fucking. I dropped my pants right there. And we turn this into OnlyFans. I, I, this ash, I don't know how much astronauts make a year. Anybody? It ain't enough. Like, I'm over here losing 1% bone density per month. That means we're, I'm going to be up here another year. That's 12% bone density. I'm pulling out my bone. That's right. Neil Dogstrong. Man, oh, man. I got to admit right now, it would be one of my fantasies to, I don't know, not to be gross, but shoot a load in outer space. <laughs> I mean, I would get on one side of the ISS. I'd have the chick get on the other side. And I'd blast a load across the thing. I mean, catch it with your yap, honey. Do something with your life. Listen, there's got to be a little space on the ISS where you can crawl in where there's like no cameras around. And take care of business. Don't don't let don't let them lie to you. Don't let them lie to you. What do you think? They're not doing sex experiments in outer space. And, and then what happens if you know you you guys conceive? I bet you come back to Earth. She gives birth, and the, the kid's got like a big old head. That's all I can imagine. A big friggin' head like this. Brum, 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 brum. Like veins coming out of it and whatnot. You know, like, holy mackerel. That fucking kid. Horrendi. I gotta admit to you, I don't... I wonder what it's like having an ugly kid. Alright? I mean... If you got an ugly kid, let's face it, he's gonna do a lot more chores around the house. Am I wrong? It's like, go outside and clean up the dog shit, will ya? Do something with that mug. Oh, I, I'm just tired.
at this point. I'm just tired. I, I was working on my car the other day. I'm 47 years old. I'm really 48. My birthday's in October. I mean, it's right around the corner. And I get to the point, I used to be able to work on a car from like sunrise ah, to sunset, not eating. Just so focused on what you do, what you're doing. Now I work on it for like two hours and I'm like, I start walking back to the shed and I'm like, I'm like tired. I don't know, I'm just ready ready for a casket, to be honest with you. Just roll me right into a casket. Yeah, so you're stuck up in outer space. I mean, you get bombarded by, like, high-octane radi radiation. So it's like, you want to tell me another piece of great news? Hmm. Guys, I just want to go, at this point in my life, I just want to go to track the poles and drag races and smoke cigarettes. I'm, listen, I'm all about track the pole and man. I even went on, e, on eBay and I bought like a vintage uh, track the pulling shirt. It makes me happy. At this point in my life, I just want th to be surrounded by things that make me happy. Speaking of buying things that you don't need. Uh, and, I mean, yeah, a tractor pulling shirt and my dream is to wear it to somebody's wedding. Because I'm sick and tired of the bullshit. Ah. Uh. Yeah, so like I said, you know, I want the only thing I watch on TikTok these days. I don't follow anybody on TikTok. Do you understand? There's no following. Like some people like request that you follow. Say, get out of my life. I literally have zero follow. Like I don't follow anybody, except for this one person. I hit the follow. It's not even a person. It's an animal. I hit the button for. I follow something on TikTok now, and it's a fucking baboon. It's a, it's a monkey, a baboon. And this monkey has taught me more about life than any human being on planet Earth. The monkey's name is Cindy. That's a baboon. And basically what this, this, this baboon runs on instincts. Like it, there's other animals around, like a little warthog. Sit, Cindy's like an old baboon. She's blind now. And basically all she exists to do is sleep and eat. I said, oh, this is the formula for happiness. So she sleeps and you try to wake her up and she's very, very grouchy. You got to get it. You got to give her food to get her out of bed. <laughs> so... They gotta like put a piece of fruit by her, like so that she'll be sleeping like this. And they put a little piece of fruit, and she's like, and she's like, "All right, I guess I'll get out of bed now." It's like this is how I feel. And she reluctantly gets out of bed. You could tell, like, she, the the damn thing looks like she's crippled with arthritis. Anyway, they give her some tea. She takes the tea, and she's like. <laughs> And the cup, it's like, whoop, bang. I was like, all right, you know, listen, no rules for you. That's all right. You know, I, I love I love it. You get to throw around the fucking flatware. No problem. There's no discipline for that. Like, hey, no, it, it's a fucking ceramic cup, all right? I paid some money for that. Relax yourself. And then she, they give us some food, and there's like other little animals around. They, these people are in Africa, and they, they, they're like a, they're like a white couple in Africa, all right. And it, they talk like, I, they, I guess they 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 were, they've been raised in Africa. I don't know what the fuck is going on, to be honest with you. So they got like these little warthogs running around and whatnot, and and uh, meat cats. Are they? Is that what they're called? Meat cats. 
They're like little weasels. And Cindy's trying to eat a food. They give her like a bowl of fruit or something like that. And so she's sitting there eating breakfast. And all these other animals come over and try to get the breakfast. And she'll be like, uh, she'll be eating. And all of a sudden, like this little meat cat will come up. And she'll just grab it by the tail. And it'll be like the Flintstones. Bang, 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 bang. And then she'll just keep on eating again. Or one of these warthogs will come up. It looks like the warthog from Motorhead. And start eating the food, and she'll just grab it by the skin and start going. <laughs> and Cindy still has the strength of 10 men at this age. It's probably the safest baboon to be around. It's like right at that cusp of safety to be around humans. She's just weak enough to not be able to rip your face off anymore. Or tear off your ball sack. And there's no, there's no like emotion on the face. So it's just, she goes from being like super sweet looking and they're petting it. And then next thing you know, super violent. But the real kicker is she likes to, uh, to groom things. Like this is a thing that like, that, you know, monkeys, they groom, <laughs> but she'll grab like a dog. And she'll, she'll just grab it like, come over here. I gotta, I gotta help you. <laughs> and then like sit it on her lap. And then she'll be like, and as she's grooming, she goes. And I swear to crying out, Crin, it might be the funniest thing I, I've ever seen in my life. So now my wife is sick and tired of seeing Cindy videos. Cause I show her every one of, of these Cindy videos. <laughs> I don't want to see any more of this monkey. I was like, well, too bad. Too bad. Look at how he grooms and he moves. So now I groom my wife and I go. It's one of the joys of my life. Anyhow. Yeah, Cindy's the best. And it's like. Sometimes she'll grab, uh, she'll grab one of these animals, like, by the tail and, like, sniff its asshole. It's, it's, there's, like, no rules. It's almost like a human, it's almost like monkeys are very human-like. So, at one, at, in one instance, you're like, oh, yeah, I can relate. And then next thing you know, it's got, it's got one of these animals by the asshole. And it's like, <laughs> and you're like, I'm waiting for Chris Hansen to walk in. Oh, not only that, this thing rips the most killer farts you've ever heard in your life. They're disgusting. Like sometimes she'll get up and move. Every time she gets up and moves and it's like real slow movements and all of a sudden it's like. And you're like, holy crow, that's got to stink. It's a fucking baboon, okay? It's a baboon. I don't expect, uh, uh, you know, Chanel number no. nine. But this thing rips the most, and sometimes it's in mid fart and then sits down, and then the, then the asshole hits the floor and it's like, and keeps farting and it's, it's reverberating off the floor. They had her on a tile floor once. They, she comes in the house. Of course, you let a baboon into your house, right? And she walks in the house and she's ripping a fart mid walk. She's like, and then she sits down and it's like, on the tile and it's like <laughs> through the tile oh my god it'd be like listen get out get out of the house it's only gonna get the mop that's number one all right because imagine a baboon in their old age horrendous farts i don't know guys you guys are, you don't have anything better to do you don't have anything better to do why don't, why don't you live your best life like this, the, the Spanish guy I got down the block that's doing wheelies. I, I, I love how no rules apply to anybody else on this planet Earth but me. I got this guy driving a dirt bike down the road. 110 miles an hour, Spanish guy. No helmet, blowing through stop signs, doing wheelies. And I'm over here getting tickets from the Port Authority. Yeah, $2.50 from going through a toll. It's a two hundred. It's a two dollar and fifty cent toll with a seventy five dollar service charge. All right, hey New York State, do me a favor. 
Come to my house and just bend me over my kitchen table and stick a piece of rusty rebar up my ass while you're at it. And I got this guy pulling lawlessly pulling wheelies all over the place. The kids are getting out of school. He's doing 110 down the road. Yeah, no, that, that no, that life is great for him. I don't think he's getting any letters from the Port Authority. I'm sick of it already. I was going to call the cops on the guy. But I was like, you know what? Uh, I can't bring myself to do it. I said, what? I'm getting to that age now where I'm calling the cops on people. <laughs> I don't know. I love it when you call it. Besides, when you call the cops, they're like, okay, what's your address? And I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? Why do you need my address? That every time you call, I, I never call the cops. I'll be honest with you. We're walking with the parents, right? On the way home and this guy's still hot dogging around. And one of the parents called the cops. I swear I didn't call the cops. But one of the parents started calling the cops. I'm like, oh, great. And as as the the, the parents call the cops, they're like, we we have a guy over here. He's he's, he's driving his motorcycle around it uh, around the block here. Like, and I'm like, and he's speeding, and and he's speeding, and he's not wearing a helmet, and he's not wearing a helmet, and he's blowing through stop signs, and he's blowing through stop signs. So I didn't call, but I kind of like, kind of like helped out a little bit, you know. I mean, there's kids around. By the way. The crossing guard, we're walking home from school. The crossing guard says, be careful. She says in, she says to, to me and one of the parents, be careful there's a beehive in the ground, like underground by that stop sign. So just be careful walking by. So our kids are like behind us, like, you know, fooling around, not, not staying with the group, of course, uh, picking up leaves off the floor, like climbing little fences and whatnot. Like they can't, just walk. So every five minutes you gotta say, Tiny, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Anyhow, so I'm like, all right, there's a beehive in the ground. Don't say anything to the kids. Cause what's gonna happen? You say, hey guys, don't go near that beehive in the ground over here. Probably the most interesting thing you're ever going to see because you're a kid and you've never seen it before. So your curiosity is so overwhelming. You have to go over there and look at it. So one of the parents says, guys, he turns around. It's, it's a public service announcement. Guys, stay away from the stop sign. There's a beehive underground. And all the kids are like, and what do they do? They all go over to the stop sign. One kid starts hitting the stop sign with a stick. I swear to God. I'm like, why did you have to say anything? Why did you have to say anything? We, w we went over to this beehive. Amazing. Uh, number one, I didn't know beehives could be underground. All right. I'm from New York. You go over to this beehive and it, the, the bees were going down. It was like they were going in and out like an elevator. It was, it was like it was like watching something like a like a cityscape. And they were just going. It was like a hole in the ground, maybe like this big. And they were going in and out, in and out. Just it would fly over and then just go like this, like an elevator down. It was it was so weird. And then one kid hit the fucking, uh, hit the stop sign with a stick. Of course, there's always that one kid. And then we, we took off running. That's all. So the next day, I see the crossing guard again. She goes, oh, she goes, the town took care of that beehive. I'm like, okay, what'd they do? Like just shovel some dirt in the hole? She goes, no, they put gasoline down there and set it on fire. I was like, Jesus Christ, what the hell's going on? <laughs> was that necessary? I mean, why didn't you just like uh, uh, pour a concrete fucking uh, sarcophagus around it? The 
to me, it seems seem like one shovel of dirt and we're, we're pretty much done here. <laughs> anyway, what's the matter? He didn't, he didn't have a stick of dynamite? And then I gotta come in. So now, now, like the only news I get is when I walk in the break room at work. So the news always has to be on. This is how you know nobody has a life. Do you, do you walk into your break room at work and they got the news on? There's some, always some snap ahead watching the news. I said, anybody that watches TV news is automatically branded the biggest loser on planet Earth. So I walk in and they're like two astronauts trapped in space. And I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm, I'm making my coffee. Yeah, I never, I never used to put creamer in coffee. Now I'm like, <laughs> they have this fucking creamer. It's like, it's like cookies. I don't know how to explain it. It's like those wafer, you know those wafer cookies that you eat. Oh my god, <laughs> these wafer sugar bomb cookies. Did you ever have these? They're like layered, layered wafer, and then there's like, like a vanilla, like cream and then another wafer and then a vanilla cream you know what i'm talking about and i used to eat them like this i'd bite the wafer off and then there would be the cream layer and then you friggin bite the, the cream layer off oh my god they got this fucking coffee creamer it's it's flavored like that so i find myself i'm like i'm a fucking barista now you didn't know and you know, I used to drink my coffee black. I used to be healthy. Like I used to have like, you know, kind of like some muscle tone. And I used to watch what I ate. Like why, I don't know. Now I'm all about the creamer. I just pour, pour the fucking creamer in the cup. Forget the coffee. Anyway, they fucking flew these two astronauts up to the ISS, the International Space Station. And it, in this Gashubang fucking Boeing spacecraft, I tell you what, I, I don't want to fly anywhere. I hate to tell my wife, I don't want to fly anywhere anymore. You ever see aircraft maintenance people? Yeah. Exactly. Go to an airport and just look out the window. You know how you can watch everybody work down there? They're like throwing luggage like it's the UFC. I mean, the, the, the guys driving those little trucks, you know, those little trucks that they drive, they're like crashing into each other. I, I said, they parked the plane wrong. I watched them park the plane wrong. You know how they tow the plane in? There's like a, there's like a strip. It's like a parking lot. They parked the plane wrong. And I, I heard some, I saw somebody come out and they were talking and they were like, like, no, no, he's shaking his head. He's like, I, I couldn't hear, but I'm like, the guy was like, no, over here, over here. So the car had to come out again, hook up to the plane, bring it back out, and repark it. I'm like, how do you fuck that up? I'm like, if they're fucking that up, what's going on with maintenance? I'm not about flying in a plane. And then you got Boeing over here. You got you got the fucking the CEO of Boeing who's just trying to get like the biggest, fattest bonus check of all time and completely sacrificing all sorts of quality of work issues. I mean the employees are in the are basically going to the news telling them that they, they would never fly in one of these planes that they built. They're like riveting penis designs into the plane. I'm not. I'm not having it. I'm not getting on that thing. So if they fly a, you're getting on a Boeing spaceship. No, I'm not getting on a spaceship. Period. I don't know, man. And then I'm walking when we're walking back from the school. You know, we have all these signs out there, like fine, like f for, for you know, if you don't curb your dog, it's a two hundred and fifty dollar fine. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, wow, I'm like, that's been $250 for like the last 25 years, <laughs> since the nineties. I'm like, that's a pretty inflation proof fine. I'm like, I almost feel like getting caught dumping dog shit. 
Like 250 bucks is kind of like, well, you know, it's a... But I mean, back in the 90s, it was a harder hit. Um, you really have nothing better to do? I went to Kohl's the other day to uh, make a return. This is my routine now in my life. My wife orders something from Amazon, okay? Then there is a nine out of 10 chance that she wants to return it. And then the burden goes on me because I am the, the base, I am the return guy now. So I take the return back to Kohl's and then I know who I got to deal with. They got this old lady at Kohl's and I'm telling you right now, you're going to see me on the news one day. Okay, because me and this old fuck are going to be rolling around on the floor. This woman has the biggest attitude. Every time I come up, every single time, she's sitting there, she's on her phone. And then I come over with my package and, and she's got to take... You th you, listen, what happened to customer service? That's what I want to know. She's going to sit there on her phone while I'm standing there. And then she looks up at me. Oh, she doesn't look up. She goes like this. Boxes, boxes over there. So you got to put down the box on the thing there. And then she says, code scan, code scan. Then I get, uh, then I take my fucking sweet ass time getting the QR code, and then she takes the gun and she like leans over, like like, and she's like waiting, and then and then she's like, <sighs> yeah, move to New York. Yeah, I got a guy who lived in Tennessee. It's a guy that does maintenance on on machines where I work. I started, I started talking to him. He's like, yeah, I just came out from, from Westchester to Long Island. I was like, why would you do that? Number one, Westchester is a dump anyhow, but he comes out to Long Island, an even bigger dump. I said, why would you do that? And he goes, oh, he goes, that's not the best of it. I came back from Tennessee. I said, Tennessee? I said, why did you do that? For his wife, for his wife. Thank you, honey. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with people. I know a guy from I know a guy that came back from Florida for his wife, a guy that came back from Texas for his wife, and a guy that came back, well this guy came back from Tennessee from his wife and he loved Tennessee. He had a motorcycle down there and everything. He would drive through the He goes, "I would take a route home from work." He goes, "I could get home from work in 15 minutes." He goes, "I would take a route that would take an over an hour." to get home because it was so beautiful going through the mountains and the trees and the pines and the this and the that. And I said, you came back to this? He's completely miserable now. Oh, it's one of the saddest things on planet Earth. But what the fuck were we talking about? Oh, so now you want to go to Coles and do returns with this fucking miserable bitch over here. So now we're going to war with each other. And my son's tugging on my shirt, tugging on my shirt, tugging on my shirt. I turn around, I'm like, what, what, what? And he's he's holding this like this. And what is it? It's a whoopee cushion. And I said, there's nothing on this earth that can make me smile anymore. I got a big grin on my face. And I put it down on the counter and I said, and I'm taking this too. I said, if there's one thing I want my son to experience, everybody out there, if you have kids, talking seven, eight, nine year old kids, make sure they experience the whoopee cushion. When I was a kid, when somebody gave me, I got a whoopee cushion from my Aunt Connie. And I'm like, what is this, a balloon? Like, you know, when I got it, I was like, what is this thing? And I take it out and I blow it up and she goes, no, you put it, you put it underneath the chair here and then you sit on it. I sat down. It was a, a connection in my DNA. 
I said, I will travel through this world with a whoopee cushion by my side in a holster for the rest of my life. I thought a whoopee cushion was the greatest thing. I get my, my mother, my sisters, company that would come over, my dog. My dog would go sit on his dog bed. I thought it was the most hilarious thing of all time. And I got one for my son. It's in his DNA now. We couldn't wait for my wife to get home because we go and we sit on the couch to have coffee. We put the whoopee cushion. I even taught him all the rules with the whoopee cushion. Remember we used to take a whoopee cushion and put it under the couch like a half hour before somebody would sit down and the air would bleed out of the whoopee cushion and nothing would happen. I taught him all the pitfalls of the whoopee cushion. Remember when you would sit down on a whoopee cushion too hard because you overinflated it and the fucking thing would pop? Oh, it'd be like an explosion going off. I said, no, you don't put that much air in it. I was teaching him whoopee cushion like a samurai. Almost like he went to the Shaolin Temple, the 36 chambers, to learn whoopee cushion from a master. Anyhow, we took it out of the box. My son calls it the whoopsie cushion. Inside, I laugh, like, every time he says it, I laugh so hard. Do I correct him? Absolutely not. Some knucklehead parents out there would correct that. No, son. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whoopee cushion. I, I want to hear whoopsie cushion for the rest of my life. As a matter of fact, that's what I call it from now on. A whoopsie cushion. From this point forward. I thought that was the most hilarious, the cutest thing ever. It's a whoopsie cushion. Anyhow. That's it. And I tell him, hey, you got to get the dog. You got to put it under the dog bed. He's like, oh my God, the possibilities. Anyhow. That was that. I had to deal with that old cunt. I tell you what, I like, I like going down there. And then they give you the receipt. 25% off at Kohl's. They, but like when you, could, when you return something from Amazon at Kohl's, they give you a sticker. It says like, you know, 25% off your next purchase. And I'm like, hey, why not? Let me go shopping around. Kohl's is like my new spot. Maybe I can get a new pair of Lee jeans. Yeah. Or maybe I could get a Sonoma shirt. It's like, yeah, I don't have any more testosterone anymore. I don't want to fuck women anymore. So let me go over here and get, uh, I don't know, a pair of... Uh, you ever see these shoes that dads wear now? These horrendi slip-on shoes that are comfortable as all hell? Let me get a pair of those. Just so I can I can make sure n no woman in her right mind would ever touch my dick again. So I go down there and I'm like, they got a Nike. Like I have this Nike hoodie that I wear. You know, the thing cost me like fucking $80. But I like the quality of it. It doesn't shrink in the wash and it actually fits well. So as I, it's black. As I'm walking by, they got the gray Nike uh, like hoodie and the Nike gray, matching gray Nike sweatpants. So I look at the price tag, it's like $70 each. I'm like, ugh. I say, you know something, I can, I can eat it because it's quality. Like it, it won't shrink in the, in the wash and you know, the fit is nice and, you know, it just holds up well. So I was like, you know what? I'll eat it. And I got a 25% off coupon. So I go there, I go to the register and I wind up getting this t-shirt. It's a Bronco on it, like Ford Bronco t-shirt. You know, they have that, you know, those They have these t-shirts over here. It said Ford Bronco. I had a picture of an old Bronco. I have an old Bronco. So I was like, I'm not walking out of here with this shirt. And it was like $7.99, $9.99 or something like that. So I go up to the register and I, I punch in everything. It comes out to like $150 without the tax yet. I'm like, oh man, I'm biting the bullet on this one. And then I scan my coupon and the discount only comes off the fucking shitty cheap t-shirt. Like, what's going on here? 
And it says the sweatsuit that the, the discount's not, it's not eligible, you're not eligible. I was like, you know what? Fuck me standing. I just took everything and I fucking threw it down on the floor and walked out. I bought the Bronco shirt. Guys, are you fucking bored to death? I am. I, I gotta apologize for this episode. I really do. Guys, what do you want to do today? I don't give a fuck. All right, you want to go to arcades? You want to? You want to take twenty-seven thousand video games, which is available on our emulation machine, and randomize them? Come on! Come on, we don't ride motorcycles anymore. We don't do drugs. We don't party anymore. So let's get down. Hit me. Picture, picture time. Give me. It's picture, picture time. Having fun. Picture, picture time. And it's all picture, picture time. It's big hands. Picture, picture time. Okay, had to do a little stretching. All games. Here we go, guys. In we are. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, S what is this? Chow. Chow Jing Sentai Jetman on the NES. Oh boy. Oh boy. Who makes it? Natsumi. Guys, why not? Why not? Let me just straighten out the screen here. There we go. All right. God, this is Discovery, guys. This is what it's all about. Battle mode. I ha I don't have a very very good feeling about this. Um. Wow, listen to this. Nice. Oh, there was an intro. Why didn't Why didn't we watch it? Right, let's get started. Easy password. Guys, I love the music. Okay, area A. Let's go. Well, this is Power Rangers. Right? Blue Swallow. M.M. Yellow Owl. Red Hawk. I, li I, I, I like blue. But red's easy to see. Alright, let's go. Okay, we got a sword. We gotta jump. Let's go. Doesn't get easier than that. Got a high kick. Oh, guys. I'm feeling the music. Life ball, that's oh jump kick. That's very generous of them. Oh shit, I didn't know he could jump. Come on. Alright, what's the story? 
story here. All right. The robot from Logan's Run. Guys, guys this game is awesome. Oh, I'm calling my boys. Look out. Yes. If this is game in the States, oh boy. Let's go, sucker. Oh boy. I basically have a punch and that's about it. Oh, oh. He's fucking me up. Oh, I got a block. That guy, he wrecked me. He wrecked me. All right, I, I've had enough. Let's go. We got 27,000 games to cover. Um, um, Jim Power. Oh, you're tickling my balls right now. What is this on? Is this the arcade or the SNES? Guys, we're not going to go to Jim Power. Love this game on the Turbo Graphics 16. Love the music and the graphics. Have we played this before? 1993. This is Western. Oh shit! Yes, guys. Look at the parallax scrolling. It's getting real. Hit me. No! No! All right. Let's get started. Wow, okay. Guys, are you ready for I think this is Western developed, right? You gotta see some graphics here, buddy. Wow. Yes. Oh shit. Wow. Super Nintendo is dazzling. Music. Th this is the music from Ease Book One and Two. Unbelievable. This game is insanely hard. Oh shit! Okay, walk it off. Take another crack at this. Because the graphics are freaking unreal. Guys, this is Super Nintendo 1993, did it say? Fucking the graphics are insane. Ah, uh, there's something over here. Give me a fighting chance. No, 
way, no way. It fucked me tender. Shots to kill an enemy, I'm sorry. Ah! And then, and then one shot death? Come on, man. You're breaking me. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about, okay. Ready your ball, Rommel! I'm like scared to death though. Oh, you shit me with this platform? My good lord. All right, guys, we gotta, we gotta get the hell out of Dodge right here. M M. Ball, ball cube. M. NBA hang time. Uh, uh. Dungeons and Dragons Tower of Doom. Capcom beat 'em up. FBA. We're in. This game is for use in the United States. Oh yeah, wait, did, guys, you hear the music? Oh, what an intro. M M. Recycle it. Don't trash it. Get get this out of here. Welcome to the D and D. Welcome, 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 welcome to credit. the D and D world. Oh yeah, you know who we're gonna be? The dwarf. Okay, we know. It's a, tell us you're happy to join the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bop, bop. Yeah, my name is Y. Y, Y. Oh, shit. Look at this, guys. Come on. You hear screams from up ahead. Where the village is running, right? Oh, yeah. Jump. Oh, we have oi. Oh, shit. Okay. We have selectable. I'm going to keep it on oil. Guys, this game is awesome. That, is that more oil? How do I use that oil again? Shit! Oh, burn to death, you little fuck! Oh, look at him burn to death, yes! Look at his little jewels on the floor, I'm in! A wounded caravan guard. Help us. Blah, blah. Oh, choose your adventure. Yes. You find a cave that will lead you to the heart of the mountain. An ominous roar. Thank you. Tracks lead to the cave. Oh, this is insane. Look at this. So cool. Is that a dagger? Oh shit, it's a trap! It's a trap, get out! Oh! 
Jesus Christ, this game rules. Ring. Oh, what does the ring do? I can't believe the pacing on it all came. Oh, yeah! Guys, can you imagine having this emulation box back then? You would have been world famous. Let's just put it that way. Oh, look at all the booty. Oh, this game is so awesome, man. This is so awesome. on the floor he's not defeated okay and retrieve the stolen caravan goods wow oh god how awesome is this game i like the oil man give me that oil that's it we're done here honey we're done All right, how do we go? How do I get out? Hey, you tits! Hold on. That's what I want to say. Oh, honey, honey, what are you talking about, honey? Okay. Oh, there's the exit up there. Cool this game is, man. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come over here. Oh yeah, burn to death. Fuck you. You 
hear a man moan from the thickets. Oh, you son of a bitch. Wait, hold on, wait. What happened here? Blah, blah, blah. Let me guess, you got attacked. Oh, shit. I just want to set people on fire. so legit it's not even funny all right let's wow it's just awesome man uh, let's do one more how do you top that wow are there that many games dungeons and dragons wow all right let's go on safari oh got a half a stall we're not gonna check it out oh thank god it didn't work what is this? Street basketball? Oh boy. Technos, Japan Corp. Uh, I don't know, guys. No. Mahjong, out of here. Tom and Jerry Tales? No. I'm not. Jordan versus Bird. Oof. You guys remember this one? I had this game growing up. Michael Jordan, it was such a cool thing to have Michael Jordan, but who give a fuck about Larry Bird? I know Larry Bird's cool now, but back then, Larry Bird was like, with that fucking nose? 1988, Electronic Arts, NES, I remember this, Milton Bradley Company. Press start. Oh boy. One on one, full game, let's go. Select player, I'm not going to be Jordan. I'm not going to be Jordan. How do I how do I get over to Jordan? Select player. C. Bird two. C. What? Oh, I'm one. Okay, I'm one. Bird computer. Play to eleven. Computer level one. Fouls. Yes. Let's go. Oh shit! Don't don't don't. Alright, this game is this game is insanely horrible. Who remembers Larry Bird having legs like Tom Platts? How do you slam dunk? Can we get down to brass tax here? Alright, goodbye. I I can't take this. Cyberlip Neo Geo. Okay. <laughs> Hit me with that Neo Geo. There we go. 330 mega. You were getting. Oh, wow. Cyberlip. <sighs> wow. All right, let's go. Cyber lip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Ready, go! Alright, we gotta jump here. 
That's basically a jump and shoot. What else do you need? You can't shoot up diagonally. That's annoying. Oh boy. Oh, okay. Oh, take that. Oh shit, I could... Oh, really? That's how you make an entrance? That's pretty neat. Look, a hamburger vending machine. The future is awesome, guys. Boy, oh boy, this game would be so much better. Oh, wow. If you could shoot diagonally up. What is that, Corbot? Yes. No, 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 go in. Reloading magazine completed. Ah! Hilarious. This must be early Neo Geo, huh? Wow, wow, wow. I ducked you, son of a bitch. Watch out! Oh, wow. Holy shit. Oh, I didn't even see these platforms. Shit! I'm staying here! Oh fuck, I didn't expect that. Okay, here we go. Out of here. Let's roll. Game reminds me of um We are now investigating the supercomputer that controls the androids. Wait, how many CO5 where the computer is and wait for the Look at the crow's feet on this guy's eyes, huh? Jesus. Wow, look at that. Oh yeah. Oh, this is the weapon we want, right guys? If it would fire! Alright guys, I mean, we get the point. We get the fucking point. Okay. Alright, turn off please. Turn off please. Turn off please. Thank you. Guys, do you realize you just tuned in to the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization? And you better believe that. With a 4K face! We'll see you next time. Guys, 
Tell me you haven't been to the Patreon page. We have 85 episodes up. Probably more than that by now. Okay, the advices program right here. This is the email. Put advices in the header. Okay, you got problems? What's going on? You can't get your dick up? That seems to be a running theme these days. <laughs> I mean, check this out. I'm like, sometimes I think to myself, what am I, a mental patient? My question to you is, how do I stop this and convince my clients that I cannot continue asking for a friend? Why would you stop? You already have the ball rolling. You already cheated on your wife. You already have these women that are dumb enough to have husbands invite a personal trainer into their house. So you're banging their wives. I, I don't see any problem with any of this, but here is the problem. I was listening to Parasite, baby. Parasite die. Parasite, baby. Hold me tonight. Come on, Ace Freely. These broads in, in their 40s, when you fuck them, it's like trying to start a lawnmower. Absolutely astounding. I know. Uh, um. Guys, write me, we'll solve all your problems, just like. We also have a portion of the show called You're the Boss, where you write to me, you, ins you insult me, you say, hey, you know, I don't know, hey, snap ahead Fred, you're going to play this game. And I'm like, oh, I'll play it because you're the boss. That's right. And we play the games that you want to play. And it's great. We discover new games. We have a real blast playing. I mean... It's fun just coming out and playing games, guys. That's what that's what we all love. And it worked out really well. And we have a bunch of these uh, You're the Boss episodes up there. So it's a lot of fun. Patreons, thank you for the support. We'll see you next time.